for our next panel, actually Fireside, we're excited to welcome Fred Thiel, CEO of Marathon Digital Holdings, which is the largest publicly traded mining company in the United States. And he's going to be sitting with Senator Cynthia Lummis, U.S. Senator from Wyoming, who is a, <laughs> and this is to, to say the least, a leader here on Capitol Hill when it comes to, to Bitcoin. So join me in welcoming both. Ben. All right. Good morning, everybody. Goodness, this is a full house. Bright lights and all. Um, so first, I just want to thank BPI for obviously facilitating this and this opportunity for me to chat with Senator Lummis, um, one of our big advocates uh, here in Washington. Um, one of the things we wanted to do to kick this off was kind of talk a little bit about the state of thinking about Bitcoin on Capitol Hill. What's your perspective on it? How, how do we possibly leverage it or change things for the better? Great question. Uh, thank you all for having me here. I, sometimes you walk in a room uh, and you feel daunted because you don't know that you have a close connection to the people you're with. But uh, I don't feel that way today. I think I have a very close connection to the people I'm with. So thank you. <laughs> So the state of play on Capitol Hill uh, is, I think, best explained by what I see as the overarching motivations. And in this administration, um, there are a number of uh, high-ranking policy positions that are held by people who are threatened by Bitcoin because they know they can't control it. They know it's decentralized. Uh, they know its potential. And these are people that are so wedded to the government uh, being in control of uh, the money, how it's spent, uh, how it's used, uh, that they find it threatening uh, that something exists that they can't control. And so with that policy overarching motivation, we're seeing things like a proposed 30% tax on Bitcoin mining. We're seeing things like that truly odd um, regulatory overreach by the energy, EIA, uh, Energy Information Ad uh, Administration over at Energy, uh, to send out questionnaires about uh, mining uh, consumption of energy that was just egregious. Um, and so these are the policy headwinds that the um, Bitcoin world is facing right now. Um, and it's really, I think, entirely based on this administration's fear of things they can't control. Uh, and so uh, it, it is definitely a time when the Bitcoin world needs to be um, on its toes, uh, willing to um, fight for uh, this important decentralized uh, store of value and means of exchange. So I, I applaud the Texas blockchain group, and I know they had a partner in um, uh, bringing litigation against the uh, absurd uh, rule make it was it was a rule that should have gone through the Administrative Procedures Act, uh, and they put out this extremely long questionnaire uh, demanding information about how much energy was being consumed, and then you look at the absurdity of the thirty percent tax proposal, which would even tax um, energy consumed if it was being vented into the atmosphere and causing uh, more the buildup of greenhouse gases. You know, some of the things that we're seeing in Wyoming about Bitcoin mining is that you can pull up a, a Bitcoin mining rig right next to uh, an oil and gas well that has not yet been connected to a, a pipeline, a gathering line, and uh, mine using 
the vented methane. So when, um, when that kind of thing is proposed for a tax, you know it's punitive, you know it's an effort to destroy an industry. And uh, so those are the things that we're guarding against. Um, and I, I'm finding more interest within my caucus uh, to uh, learn more about Bitcoin. Uh, I've, I've tried to cultivate that interest over the past three and a half years. Uh, it's been limited interest, uh, but even people who just didn't, didn't want to take the time to understand it, but you know, knew it was out there and knew that I was paying attention to it, um, are now finally starting to ask questions because they see the target that Bitcoin has on its back uh, in this administration that fears things that are decentralized and out of their control. Arguably today, sorry. Well, I'll just speak up. Um, Here, you sis. Okay, I would say. Uh, arguably today, um, you know, roughly 50 million Americans who are of voting age have owned or own crypto. So you would think it's a big issue for some people. Um, and we're starting to see Bitcoin becoming a political topic. Um, and I think that it's very interesting to see how lines are being drawn on this. What do you think as an industry the Bitcoin industry can do to really help educate people. If you had a magic wand and you could ask us for anything, what would it be? Boy. Um, well, certainly um, bring your strongest, most articulate advocates to the table to help us in Congress. We can always schedule events uh, that bring staffers and uh, senators and House members into a room to learn more. Um, it's, it's a hard topic to explain, but I, there's more curiosity about it now because it's becoming a political issue. Look at what a big political issue it's gonna be as part of this Ohio Senate race that's coming up. You've got a um, sort of a blockchain entrepreneur running as a Republican against the sitting chairman of the banking committee uh, who seems uh, to have Elizabeth Warren whispering in his ear about this topic. And so it, this issue is drawing a very sharp contrast in the policy inclinations in the Ohio Senate race. So that's when where it's gonna be a big issue. You've got uh, my principal uh, Democrat uh, co-sponsor, Lummis Gillibrand, uh, she's up for election in New York. And she is, in my opinion, the strongest advocate uh, within uh, the Democrat caucus, even though uh, her state is a state where probably Bitcoin mining is not uh, a, uh, a friendly suitor for the use of energy. So um, when you, I would say when you get yourself involved in those races, ask questions in those races. Um, have people uh, in, the, in the crowd uh, to ask questions. Uh, of, and so it, because then it puts those policymakers, those candidates, in the situation where they have to respond in a public forum to a question about Bitcoin. And all of a sudden they know, man, I, I need to learn more about this. I need to be better prepared to respond to this. And I better be right about the policy positions I'm taking. So I'd say identify those races and play in them. Um, we're going to see several of other races around the country where these issues uh, become front and center. There's a member of the banking committee uh, who is up for re-election in Montana, uh, and uh, we're trying to educate uh, his uh, opponent on my side of the aisle 
about um, Bitcoin and, and uh, blockchain technology. And so he's conversant in it as well. Uh, knowing that that's a key position on the banking committee. You know, the banking committee is kind of the obstacle here. We have better advocacy on the finance committee um, and the ag committee. And, of course, Bitcoin being a commodity uh, is going to land in the ag committee because that's where the Commodity Futures Trading Commission jurisdiction is. So the Gillibrand is on ag. Uh, uh, Senator Bozeman, uh, you know, I've spent a lot of time with. Um, he came to a dinner that Michael Saylor uh, spoke at in, at length about uh, the advantages of, of uh, Bitcoin as uh, a store of value. Uh, and so we're, we're working, and Tim Scott came to that dinner, by the way. So we're trying to cultivate people that are going to be in key decision-making positions uh, in, uh, in policy regarding Bitcoin. And also now that we kind of think that blockchain is going to play a role in the development of artificial intelligence, uh, starting to explain um, how it's important to understand bl uh, blockchain technology and the original uh, use of blockchain chain technology is Bitcoin. So it's a great place to start. So first principles, start at the beginning. Good. So as we think about, we now have ETFs that have been approved. Yes. We have FASB has approved ruling regarding mark to market. So the institutional world is starting to view Bitcoin as something more than just a curiosity mm -hmm. at this point, mm -hmm. given some legitimacy. Energy is an area where now Bitcoin really needs to do its work because that seems to be continued to be a bit of a target area. Bitcoin miners are now starting to innovate around energy generation. You mentioned capturing stranded methane gas off of oil fields. There's also landfill, obviously, a lot of manure and dairy and cattle industry. Yeah, tell me about that shrimp thing. <laughs> so essentially, um, we look at... at Bitcoin mining in two ways. There's grid stabilization, utility scale, and then there's energy harvesting. Energy harvesting is where you capture, um, whether it's methane gas, it could be um, you take biomass from a food processing, methanol production, ethanol production. You generate energy with that by turning it into methane and then converting that into electricity. And you create heat with the electricity. Now, why did I not say make Bitcoin? Because making heat is done by making Bitcoin. But at the end of the day, industries are interested in having partners who can take a biomass, take a stranded material, they will pay you to take it. And 50% of industrial energy expense is spent to heat things. And so they need heat back. And so if you can take a waste product, turn it into energy, and feed heat back into an industrial process, you do more for the environment than a lot of environmentalists want. And at the same time, your cost to mine Bitcoin becomes very small because your energy cost is low. And so one of the things we're doing in Nebraska actually is we're starting to heat greenhouses and do shrimp farming using the heat from Bitcoin mining as a byproduct. And I think you're gonna start seeing this as a way for people to grow proteins in areas of the disadvantaged world. We all know that Bitcoin is in the developing world a very important thing, very different than in the developed world. But we believe that buildings should be heated with Bitcoin miners. We believe that industrial processes, every Anheuser-Busch brewery should have Bitcoin mining as part of its dealing with the brewing product uh, waste processing sure. and heating. So, um, but there are lots of great uses like that, but that's something we also need to get capital Hill excited about is the energy use of Bitcoin and how it can be positive versus viewed as parasitic. So what you just described, Fred, is the unique ability of Americans to innovate. So a lot of Bitcoin mining was happening in China. China banned it in, what, 2021? And now about 30% of Bitcoin mining is happening in the United States. It was a huge benefit. Uh, to the United States to have China ban. But what's happening, as you described it, are innovations 
uh, in the use of energy, because as Bitcoin, for example, halves again, later this month, um, the uh, product produced, uh, the sats that are produced from mining, are going to be cut in half. And so it forces this industry to innovate in ways that will benefit the use of energy for every sector that's using energy. And so the innovations that are being uh, created by Bitcoin miners are going to have worldwide benefits. Um, and so I think it's important that we share this message as much as we can on Capitol Hill. Um, I am, of course, an advocate for a uh, change in administrations in November. And among the things that I'm trying to advocate for, uh, if that happens, uh, is the, the placement of people in a new administration that understand that, that understand what a creative um, industry uh, this is and how important it can be uh, to the advancements in energy use and consumption uh, to f actually further the ability to use legacy energy uh, to create uh, an expanded energy uh, opportunity. And we know that that's just critical to the world. I just got back uh, from a congressional delegation trip uh, in Southeast Asia. And among the things that we were told was that the importance geopolitically about the United States position in Southeast Asia is our ability to help them meet their energy needs in a cleaner manner than they're doing now. We were in Seoul, Korea, and it, the one day we were there, it, the, the air quality was so bad that it made your eyes burn. It wasn't that that pollution was being generated in Seoul, Korea. It was being generated in China. And they figure what their air quality is going to be by seeing what the air quality is in China and then waiting two days. And that's going to be their air quality in Seoul because the air quality is so bad in China. Um, there are 23 million people in Manila, the Philippines. There are 34 million people in the greater Tokyo area. I mean, the, the, and, and with artificial intelligence uh, consuming more energy, uh, with uh, the demands for energy being ever increasing, uh, we're going to need more, not less. And we're going to need more uh, in places where we can export our energy and our expertise. And Bitcoin mining is a source of energy use expertise that the whole world can use. Thank you. That was the best commercial I've heard for it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, one of the biggest challenges that not just the United States has, but even places as far away as Africa is lack of transmission. Lines. We can build solar, we can build wind, we can build all sorts of energy generation. The problem is getting it to the consumer. And that is one of the biggest problems the United States faces today is if we're ever going to do any form of energy transition, however it may look, transmission lines are the single biggest hurdle that we have. And by being able to generate energy where you use it, you can essentially obviate that. Help. So as we kind of look at innovation and we think about uh, innovation, um, obviously technology innovation, AI is a huge thing in the US. Technology will uh, continue to eat a greater part of the, uh, the power produced on the grid. Chaps. For Capitol Hill, as you look at AI, you look at Bitcoin, you look at these technologies, how do we best position the innovation opportunity for Congress so that uh, we build more support around these core technologies? Well, we're, we're seeing 
uh, the Congress start to wrestle with the uh, advent of uh, AI as a huge player in our economy. Um, again, we have people who tend to want to regulate it before they even understand it, um, figuring out how to regulate it. Um, there are people like me that are saying, let it run for a while. Let's see where this thing goes before you figure out how to regulate what you don't understand. Um, just imagine uh, the Wright brothers. Um, if, uh, so they find a way to put people in the air. Uh, if our Congress had been around when they were innovating that, um, oh my gosh, every imaginable danger and risk and hazard to uh, the idea of mankind putting itself uh, in the air would be dreamed up. Uh, well, now we have artificial intelligence coming along. It, the, the uses, both positive and negative of which, we can't even fathom today. Uh, and yet we're trying to view it as a negative and uh, foresee how we should regulate the negative side of it. That's absolutely premature. And uh, this is an area where we need to allow the innovators to innovate and uh, see where they take us. And, uh, and, and where Bitcoin miners are taking us with regard to innovations in energy uh, is a perfect example about if you let American innovation and intelligence and uh, uh, idea making run in a free society, um, it, it will find you know, price discovery and find the cheapest way to make something work well. I mean, that's what we're so good at, Fred. And um, I hope that happens with AI as well. That's kind of the direction that I'll be pushing uh, anyone on Capitol Hill that will listen to me. Fortunately, um, uh, I have spent so much time on this subject uh, in the US Senate that um, people kind of know that they've got to go through me to get something done, whether it's positive or negative on this subject, which gives our office both, a, both tremendous responsibility, uh, but also tremendous opportunity to shape policy making in this area. So I want to invite you all as people who are on the front lines of innovating in this space, if you see something coming, whether it's positive or negative, that you think we might not know about, by all means, pick up the phone or send us a text or an email. You're the ones that are um, on the front lines of this, uh, whether it is in a positive way or uh, in the regulatory world, probably a negative way. Uh, and please keep us informed. Furthermore, if there is a change in administration in November, help us find good people to serve in the regulatory environment uh, who understand the un untapped and unleashed potential uh, for uh, making America uh, just sort of the greatest innovator in the space of uh, digital assets, in the space of artificial intelligence, uh, in, the, in the space of robust energy innovation. Uh, we're going to need those people in a regulatory environment. Great. I can't think of a better way to wrap it up than what you just said. So thank you very much, Senator Lumbers. Thanks, Fred. Thanks for having me.